my name's Karen Elaine. I play viola, among other instruments, and I've always been an enthusiast for all things athletic and, and uh, have found a way with my magnificent trainer, Mr. Heath Perry, to combine the two this year. Ah, well, thank you very much, Karen. Yes, sir, yes. <laughs> well, so when Karen, I met Karen, she was out on the beach and she was uh, with a friend and they were wanting to do this um, kind of adventure type of competition called the Tough Mudder. And it's where you have to do all these crazy obstacles of climbing ropes and hopping over logs and going through water and, electric you know, <laughs> yeah, an electric shock on top of that. But, um, and, and I could see that they were trying to learn some of the apparatus out here on Santa Monica Beach. And so I asked them if they, you know, wanted some pointers with climbing the rope and, and they were enthusiastic about that. And then I offered to work with them a little bit and we spent about 30 minutes and they started getting a, a hang of uh, the traveling rings. A few places that actually have these set up. There's only three places in the U.S. that have them. This is one of them. And when I first met Karen here, her and her friend were trying to work these rings, and it was quite a sight. But through very a very little, little <laughs> effort. What's beautiful about these is they look like the hardest thing ever. You're basically doing tires and swings on here, but with the right progression, the right technique, you, if someone has enough upper body strength, you can teach them to do this really fluidly and easily, and it's such a beautiful exercise to do. So, I'm gonna show you their initial progression for it, which is just learning to pull properly side to side so you don't injure the shoulder. So, I get people kind of working side to side, and then as you're pulling, you turn towards it. And then what helps get that swing so you can go to the next one is you get the knees raised and that creates more momentum in the swing and makes it easier to pull. So that's the initial movement. Now we're going to show with Karen like how you take that and you work it into going the full length and the full length back. So notice how when she pulls she's going to turn towards it which keeps that shoulder in a good position and it feels comfortable for the shoulder. And then she's also lifting and swinging her legs up so when she releases it really swings her nice and smoothly to the next one. You get people on here who are new at it and they have very little momentum and really the key is momentum in control is your friend and assists you in the movement if you're going too slow it's too it's going to be too difficult to do if you have it in the perfect range you're going to get use that momentum and it'll feel almost effortless and when you watch her that's what it's going to look like are you ready i think i'm ready let's show it off come on all righty i'm going to get a little bit more chalk here more chalk yeah more chalk we use the chalk to help grip on these. The, it actually gets pretty tiring to hang on and swing, especially with one arm, to the next one. So chalk is your friend, just like the gymnasts use. There we go. Dun dun, momentum. Dun dun. Nice. Turn and pull. Boom. Getting that nice rotation with the hips, swinging it around. All right, let's build up some swing. Lift, tilt those hips up, boom. Beautiful. And she's going to do the one arm release at the end. I'm going to turn around. Okay. Yeah, nice spin. Dun, dun, dun. Beautiful. How's it feeling out there? It feels good. Nice stretch. <laughs> <laughs> that looks beautiful. And she's going to do a little dismount. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. Look, she's not even tired. She's going to go again. And so after that, it became a nice fit. And the beauty of working with someone like Karen is that she's obviously, as a professional violist, a very dedicated person to her practice and what she has passion for in life. 
and I've seen it in all levels, and it definitely shows through in training. And as a, a personal trainer, it's, it's one of the greatest gifts you can get is, is, is someone that will actually listen to everything you say and will do that practice, that consistent practice that it takes to continue to improve and get to those points where even that you probably didn't think you would ever be able to do. I'm, I'm in awe, I yeah. have to admit. <laughs> so, and so it starts with really being able to evaluate where people are currently and knowing that she was a professional violist uh, and, and honestly it's with almost every single sport, every kind of activity where people do a repetitive action, there's usually imbalances that occur and it creates tightness, it creates weakness in other areas uh, of the body and so it's important to find those those areas out and start rebalancing and reopening up the things that are tight and strengthening things that are weak and and creating that balance back in the body initially and then as they start feeling comfortable and more balanced their ability to adapt to more challenging movement patterns really can progress beautifully if you try to do the movement patterns before you create that that stability and that balance and that range of motion needed, that's when people get injured. They try to go where they want to go too fast and it's important to start where you are, balance everything out, build a nice foundation and then use progressionary functional type exercise to adapt to whatever your goal may be. But we're going to start working on balance and movement on the balance beam. So we're just going to have her climb up mm -hmm. on the balance beam here. And now she's going to turn and face the feet the same direction. Mm -hmm. And then just get comfortable with squatting with the feet one in front of the other, which requires a lot of balance. Now she's been training with this for a while. So as you can see, she works through it quite fast. But go ahead and just go up and down nice and slow. Beautiful. If you have someone that's new at this, you'd maybe limit the range a little bit and just even start with a small quarter squat and as far as range of motion. But then you eventually work down to where you get her to go all the way down, grab the balance beam and maybe shift forward and back. Beautiful. And then come back up. And then she's going to kick her heels out the side in reverse directions. Requires a lot of balance to go up on the balls of the feet and allow that rotation. Come back the other direction. Beautiful. So that's a great like way to get people started on this. And even just walking back and forth, forward and backwards. So that's a little low level balance beam progression. Now we're going to work up to the next level, which is the medium height balance beam. Now this is uh, fun when you have to actually teach people how to get up on this thing. So as you can see, this is something we've practiced before, doing the hop leg up and get yourself up. Now, what we're going to work now is where we integrate the upper and lower body into the movement. So she's going to come all the way down and grab the balance beam with her hands and then do a bear crawl all the way down. Beautiful. Thank you. Finding that good one hand, one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. Rotate around. Nice job. Thank you. This is uh, training her shoulders a little bit as she does it as well. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to start working a little lateral movement, which is more challenging and requires even more balance than walking forward and back on the balance beam. She's going to do a little side scoot on the balls of her feet. Beautiful. And you can see how it's like, whoa, back and forth. You're working with just the front part of the foot and the heel stays up. So it really requires a great deal more balance and it's all, um, you have less surface area to, to balance with. Beautiful, so there's sort of a middle range. Now we're gonna move up to the high beam. We're getting into the high level. And you can do all these on any beam, but you wanna stay with people's comfort level as far as their own fear. Some people are afraid of heights. Some people have no fear of heights. So you can even start them on a higher one right away. But if someone is afraid of heights, you always start them in that range where they feel comfortable. And then you start challenging that a little bit with what they're comfortable with. So we move to the high beam over here. 
She's going to have to hop herself up there. This is even more challenging. So she has to jump up, bring a leg up, find her balance, work herself up. But since she's been doing those bear crawls, she has that balance to get herself up, no problem. Okay, now we're going to go into a single leg balance with different positions. So as she extends the leg and as she brings it forward back and, and to the side, it's gonna create more uh, difficulty in the whole balance thing. She's changing her positioning. So she's gonna start with bringing one leg up and grabbing it in the front of her. And then she's gonna grab it in the front with the other arm. Boom. And then bring it out to the side. And to the back. And then switch to the other hand. A little crossover. Beautiful. Now extend the arms and legs out and she's going to slowly tilt all the way over and grab the balance beam and try to take that back leg to the sky. With good control. Walk the hands towards the foot. And lift that leg towards the sky. Beautiful. And bring it back down and roll it up. All right, there's different progressions for the balance beam. The beauty with her is that she's been able to reestablish new goals because she keeps blowing right past these goals that she has for herself out here and with her ability with um, what she has um, decided as an exciting new adventure with her viola playing, and that's uh, creating a presentation of movement with her music and you're gonna have to tell more about that. The inspiration for me to create this this blending of music and movement was actually the seed was planted years ago uh, when I, I was an adjunct professor at San Diego State University and I had the pleasure of collaborating with staff composers and dancers, and uh, Pat Sandbeck, who is appreciated very much in the modern ballet, modern dance world, she set to music several pieces where I was an integral part of the dance. So the piece that Heath and I do, it uses music from the fifth cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. That's actually something I danced earlier with Pat. And I also did other pieces with other dancers where I was much more uh, in the background or I was an integrated part of the music. So learning, learning the, the dance steps and movements, that, that was just very intriguing for me because I've always been in, in my growing up stages, I've always been more of a track and field person versus um, the focused, disciplined dance. Um, in just the last year, uh, several of my, my colleagues in the music industry, because of varying degrees of stress in their life, lack of nutrition, lack of healthy diet, lack of exercise, have died. About 10 people, men and women, have died who were not much older than me. And so that encouraged me to take this passion that I already have for the music and movement and take it to a whole new level as a person who lives by example. And I know that whenever I go out on the stage, whenever I go into work, in, in the, the different studios or live concert environments where I, I, I work and perform and teach that I, it's noticed, it's noticeable that I don't have the issues like Keith was just saying a moment ago with imbalance, with pain, with, with difficulty playing through a full day of work. So I, I thought, how, how would I do uh, an effective job of conveying that to, on a global scale? And, and I saw some, some uh, duo partnerings, dance movement, acrobatic yoga movements with a, another group that they, of course, didn't use it live instruments. They were, they were just the movement portion, just the dancers. But I thought in some of the movements, especially in some, taking some of the movements, simplifying them, 
that I could potentially perform, be the performer as a dancer as well as the, the source of music. So that, that's basically what I started doing, how, how to create music the way it was intentioned, I think, to eliminate the stress in our life, to bring beauty and, and relaxation to not just the audience, but to the performer. And on an intellectual and physical level, keep it interesting, keep it challenging. Again, many of my colleagues who've, who've been in the music industry, varying degrees of the, the aspects of the music industry, they've they, they've experienced they are in the midst of what we call burnout, which many people have in their various careers. And so I wanted, I've, I've always been excited about playing music and, and how to encourage my, my fellow colleagues to be in the same, same resonating sphere, the same inspiration level, because ultimately it's, it's a team sport <laughs> playing, making music and it raises the level of the end product so that everything is, is much better quality. And so I, I imagined myself working on some of the acrobatic yoga movements and, and discipline uh, concepts that I started learning at the beginning of this year with Heath and a set to movement, original choreography to two of the movements of the Johann Sebastian Bach cello suite number five. So we use the two gavotte movements, gavottes one and two, and the Sarabande movement. And um, we go from there. And, and the goal, uh, of course, is to set movement to the other four mo uh, movements of music. And we're going to incorporate a couple other people, another musician, dancer, colleague of mine as well as another acrobatic artist uh, gentleman so it's it's going to be a big extravaganza and I can foresee this being a new musical performance art expression ultimately and in which people can incorporate this into their musical training one of the wonderful things that Heath and I have been able to do over the year as we've given performances of this piece has been to give guest lecturing performance spots at, at different schools and, and spaces. One of our performances was at the Music Conservatory in Pasadena, which is uh, uh, um, one of the charter schools ranging from, I think, junior high or middle school through high school. And we set up our performance, of course, we go straight through the performance and then we have a question and answer session and ask for volunteers from the audience to come up. And we had one very interesting young man, uh, of course, when people are young and they first get started in their music training and they, they discover that, wow, three hours or more of practice a day really takes your level of playing up to a whole different level. They start doing that if they're missing the basic structural awareness of their body, they start building problems into their physique, into their way of getting around the instrument, into their just way of being. And we came across a young man, um, 10th, 11th grade, junior, sophomore, very young boy in, in high school who has, in the course of a year and a half, developed the hunchback, it's completely lopsided, it, it's so sad. And Heath came in, worked with this young man on some of the conditioning um, exercise muscle, um, muscle group uh, combinations that he works with me in an effort to get this young man to open up his back, to stretch, to feel balance, evenness side to side. And, and it was interesting to hear the young man's responses as to where he felt muscle tension or muscle movement or lack of thereof. And, and so just, just really reinforced why this is so necessary, aware, awareness of the body. There, there was something when I was in uh, college back in the early 80s called Alexander Technique that was applied generously to people in their training and that's kind of how I see this, the new Alexander technique.
gone from the balance beams over to the ropes. Um, you're going to see different progressions related to the rope. This is excellent for creating good functional upper body strength and also integrating your legs and your core into assisting with climbing up the rope. And you're going to see her go from just a beginner phase of learning to pull and hold the body weight with the, the rope to actually climbing the rope and then actually working this whole apparatus uh, which she has progressed to over a very short amount of time because she's an exceptional student. Thank you. All right, so we're going to start with what we like to call jump pull-ups with the rope. I'm going to demonstrate that. Ooh, nice. So what she's doing is she's using a little jump from the legs to assist to get up and get that feel of using the muscles appropriately for the pull. She's learning to engage her lats, latissimus dorsi, which is this big muscle here. When she pulls up, good instead of just using her arms and her biceps. So we start off with that, doing a lot of uh, those, and when people start getting that good strength, then you can just do holding techniques where you just hang on to the rope and hold and get that isometric strength going. Yes, nice, okay, let's bring it down. We don't wanna wear you out. You're gonna have to do a lot of different stuff. Now you'll see her functionally just cruise up the rope using her legs and feet. There's different techniques for this. You can do a wrap around and then you create a hold with the foot like this and then you slide it and re-grab as an anchor point to re-grab with your arms and then pull from. So we'll see her do it in action. Nice. Beautiful. And bring it down. Nice. Now when you're doing this, what she was just doing is actually very challenging on the skin of the feet. So normally it's going to be easier to do that with shoes on, especially when the rope's coming across the top part of the foot. You notice when she came down, she used just the inside of her feet, which are hard to grab and push through. But for coming down, you just need a little bit of resistance. Now, are you ready for to show off the amazing feet that you have here? I think I am. All right, let's do this. So what she's going to do is she's going to climb up the underside of this pole, and she's going to transfer all the way across the rope, come down, transfer over, transfer over, all the way down. So this is an incredible amount of skill and versatility and ability integrating her body in a functional way to move through this. Plus, obviously, it's kind of scary, too. She's getting over the, the height and transfer of weight through this. So let's try this. OK. Here we go. Nice. When she goes to transfer over here, she's got to really anchor herself well, make sure she has a good grip, both hands, before she brings the leg over, locks in, re-grabs, brings it down the rope. And then she's gonna stop above the ground and transfer over. She's gotta get her momentum over, nice. Re-grab, re-grip with the upper body, and move up the rope. Nice. How's it going? This it's is when the body out. really starts fatiguing. We gotta cheer her on. Come on, Karen, you're doing amazing. Get it up there. She did a hard workout yesterday, so this is amazing. Boom. So then she's gonna get a good grip. Transfer those hands, transfer the legs, lock in. Make sure she's secure so she can safely come back down. That is awesome. Beautiful, yeah. And when we first started doing this, she couldn't even quite make it up the rope. So what a progression. This is dedication, Pretty exciting. effort all the way through. Beautiful. We're back here at Santa Monica Beach, the original Muscle Beach area. This is actually the lawn where a lot of people work on acrobat stuff and handstands and fun things like that. What we brought is one of my favorite tools and one of the most versatile tools out there is called the Viper. It stands for Vitality, Performance, and Reconditioning. 
So we'll start with the last letter, which is R for reconditioning, even though it's it's because it's the beginning stage of basically getting the body working to the level that you want it to work. So with reconditioning exercise, one of the best ways to start off with is postural work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the vipers and put them in front of us, put our hands on it, and then we're going to do a squat. And as we squat, we're going to tilt it away from us and then come back up. Now let's have Karen turn to the side so you can see what happens with her body when she does this. As she goes down, by tilting it away, it makes her stick her butt out more. What you're doing is, you're, one, you're keeping more posture. By having the hands here, it keeps the chest up, and you want to teach people to do that when they're squatting. And the other thing is, it creates that accordion effect to where the chest goes forward. As it goes forward, the hips go back. And it keeps you centered over your feet for a nice squat, up and down. Perfect. Then if we want to progress that, we'll go into a single leg squat and add in some balance and you can do the same thing. I'll be doing it forward and she'll do it to the side so you can see the dynamics of it. With we'll tilt out, go into a single leg squat and bring it back up. Beautiful. So those are some of the beginning uh, exercises. Then we're going to work into a little bit getting into the vitality part of it, but still a little bit of reconditioning, and that is handling momentum. Most people get injured from momentum in exercise or sport, or even just walking down the street. You may be walking and you trip. And so how you learn to catch yourself quick when you trip is learning to understand and make your muscles ready for change in movement and momentum. So we're gonna grab it at, on the outsides of the tube just like so, and we're gonna start swinging it like a pendulum to get a feel for that movement and actually feel the centrifugal force as it swings through. And then we'll bring it all the way up over the head and balance over the top. And then we'll twist, get a nice spinal rotation as we're focusing on our posture and then swing it around to the other side. So again, we're working lengthening of the body we're working good postural strength and lift. We're working momentum. We're working range of motion. All this is very good. Then what we're gonna do is swing it up and re-grab grips. Let's try that. Swing it up, boom. Look at that, beautiful. All right, and go to the handles. Beautiful. All right, now let's switch to a nice stationary where we're going to integrate strength training with the squat. So now we're going to actually use the weight and we're also going to do the squat that we just learned. So we have good postural squat. We're going to extend out and bring it back in. Then we're going to flip it. Boom. We call this the box squat. This is tremendous work for the core, the shoulders, the arms. We're integrating everything as we squat. And again, as you jet it out, you have to really support with the core as you extend that weight. And you do it to the side and above the head. Beautiful. All right. Then what you progress to is more explosive movement. Let's do a toss and grab the tube. Nice. Now press it up overhead. Hold it up there. Now spin around. Spin back. Yeah, bring it down. Ah, oh, nice. As you can see, it's very challenging. Another one of those progressions. So as you can see, you take this thing and you work at the lowest level with someone who's just beginning and needs to just get the range of motion and basic strength down, and you can work it up to an athletic level where you're throwing it in the air, catching it, holding it while you spin in different directions, and it really creates an overall, uh, it works on agility, it works on functionality, it works on power, everything that you could want. That's the Viper. Thank and you very I, much. I think that for me, as, as really a novice, uh, uh, novice gymnast, no, novice cheerleader, <laughs> novice acrobatic yogaist, um, it, it's so important for me to understand what Heath, my partner, is doing when he's doing the various lifts and, and 
being the lifter with this this incredible Viper tool that gives it allows me to visualize what he's going through as he's manipulating my body when we're doing our performance art. Absolutely. That was a great analogy, for sure. Thank you. Keith offered freely of himself his very high level of professional quality muscle management awareness coaching to two complete strangers, not knowing if we'd ever show interest again or if we'd be appreciative of it. And so I'm still just in awe of his wonderful giving spirit and that right then and there I'm like, how much? What do you charge an hour? I'm sold. And I was already thinking from that moment, I want to do this combination. I need to have a movement partner. And so I, I did exercises. I developed the core and the upper body strength, developed a different control and balance and strength with my legs such that I got up the nerve finally to ask him if he'd be willing to try this performance art piece out with me and, and he was agreeable and here we are doing more and more and more. Yeah, and it helped that um, I actually uh, was a collegiate cheerleader and then coached cheerleading. So I taught uh, tumbling and partner stunning for cheerleading and I've been working with the acro group that's here on the weekends and so it was something that I had a lot of experience in uh, as a base for a lot of the stunts and also coaching and teaching it. So uh, that, that's a whole kind of a different experience um, from just normal, I'm trying to get this person healthy and functional to more of teaching real technique in order to make things happen, you know, together as partners because it's very important timing is very important when you're doing these transitions into to stunts and it can make all the difference in the, the world whether you actually are able to hit it or it falls to the floor. <laughs> so it's, it's a whole other level of, of commitment and yeah she it was, it was an opportunity for me to kind of enjoy and get back into the swing of some acro experience again with the, some partner uh, stunting and um, and of course I could see that for me, with what I do with people, how you keep um, people inspired and engaged is it's got to be something that they are passionate about and love and they have fun with. And I knew that this was a really important aspect to what she wanted to do, so I wanted to really help facilitate that for her and, and provide that for her and for as much as I, as I can. So, Part of the, the inspiration and passion of doing this is at the new year when I first met Heath, one of my goals was not just to, and we always start with our New Year's goals, I want to lose 10 pounds, you know, things like that. I wanted to get into super fit shape for myself over the course of the year, giving myself time. And I wanted to do it not just this time, not just with the exercise, but I needed to find a food combination. I knew I was doing the wrong food combos to be effective at that. And so I got the whole package with Heath as, as a coach with my diet, in integrating probiotic foods, making my own homemade raw milk, kefir drinks. It's been really, really exciting, really dramatic. My, my body physique change, my energy level. I used to be a 20 vitamins and supplements a day kind of person. I just eat the healthy foods and, and, and I, I have even more energy than before. And that's all thanks to Heath and his, his picture, his outlook on life, uh, awareness of things like Proposition 37 and why we need to vote yes on it. These things are just really big, important elements in my becoming a, a healthier, more dynamic, wonderful example to my friends and colleagues and hopefully the world. All right, now we're gonna show you some acro yoga type maneuvers. A lot of the stuff that we, when we're trying to learn balance and stability with these acrobatic stunts for 
the acro viola routine that we do. We want to start at a low level to where as we're gaining those, um, working on our balance and coordination, we're doing it at a low level so if it falls or what have you, we're in a safe position. Acro yoga, where I'm lying on my back and I support her with my hands and feet, really helps get help her learn to stay nice and tight, nice and centered, and allow me to control her movement, which is very essential to, to do a lot of these moves that we do in this routine. So we're gonna start off with uh, back arch and transitioning to holding with the thighs and then flip out of it. So here we go. Walk on back, all the way to the heels touch my Tush, so she can be centered over myself. She's gonna start back bending down and we'll lift her up. And this is an exceptional stretch for the spine as well. So she's in extension and I'm holding her in extension and she can totally relax. So this is great for relieving tension in the lower back, opening up the hip flexors that are tight for people and allows her just to relax the movement. Now she's gonna bring her legs up, over, and around, and we're gonna switch, boom, to a hanging position. And now we can just get perfect traction of the spine, so gravity is stretching her spine straight down. And we can bring her head into flexion and do a nice stretch there, and the whole time she's engaging and holding positions, so it's very easy for me to hold and bring her feet together. So she's changing these positions, but she still has to hold our anchor spot. If she changes her thigh position, then my feet will slide right, slide right off. So she has to really engage her core and her hip flexors during this. And eventually I'll be playing my instrument through this whole sequence. This is what it would look like. Yes. And we'll bring the legs back out and we're gonna flip out to her feet. Boom. Ta-da! Nice. Now the mermaid. Oh yes. This again will be something that we're working on for the advancement of the routine. This is uh, something you may have seen and what was that movie with Patrick Swayze? The famous, Splash. No, the famous dance movie. Oh. Dirty dancing, that's right. So you saw he did the bird. Well, this is from the feet to her doing the bird and she's gonna be playing the viola in this position. So we'll see. Dun, dun, dun. And bring it up, boom. And lift the chest and the heels, chest up, chest up, chest up. There you go. Nice. Really arched, there you go. Nice. And let's bring it down. Whoosh. Boom. Nice. That was a nice discount and those are some, too. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, those are nice examples of acro yoga. There you have it. talking about there is the the philosophy of what I do uh, which is living it's dropping the G and adding an apostrophe it totally changes the word you know most people are living I mean everybody's living but when you when you put that expression to it it takes it to another level you're you're tapping into passion related to your life and to health and so what we've done here what I do with exercise is I try to work with every important aspect as it relates to a functional body, whether it's flexibility, strength, um, relaxing and reducing stress, um, making it fun, enjoyable, um, and even where people feel like they have been or athletic for the first time in their lives. And 
but it's really geared towards that specific person's needs. And it's important to understand that that's movement, that's exercise, and that's really important, but it's just one part of the whole package. Then you have nutrition, which it's really about the food. What it comes down to is what are you eating and is that food serving you or not? And if it's not, then it's no matter how much you exercise, you're still gonna have issues related to the results that you're trying to achieve. So nutrition is a very important aspect. And then the other aspect, which really helps me tie into what she's doing and what she's talking about, including the Proposition 37 of labeling GMO foods, I believe the arts and activism are essential to an overall healthy approach. The arts is the music side or any other kind of artistic endeavor is really important to keep that vitality in your life. And then activism where you're standing up for what you believe and you're doing what you can to make this world a better place and you receive the benefit of that giving that you do with activism or volunteerism. You? Absolutely, ditto. I agree, that's, that's the goal, that's the thrust. Very excited to be here and, and be able to manifest the concept of a healthy, healthy lifestyle and you know, manifesting all the blessings and gifts from that. That's, that's sharing with others, a wonderful Buddhist concept.